Taurus. Hey y'all, welcome to the channel. Let's get into it. I love reading for the Taurus Collective. So the title of your reading is they have everyone else fooled but you. Okay. So let's get the signs out of the way first you could be dealing with. We have the moon here. This could be a Pisces or a Cancer person. Somebody that satisfies your emotional needs, um, nurtures themselves and nurtures others. We have fire. So an Aries, a Leo, or Sagittarius. The number 23 is here. That could be significant. We have air, a Libra, Aquarius, or Gemini. The number 25 could be significant. We have the number 21 on the table three times, y'all. <laughs> so that number could be very significant. Someone's birthday showing up as Neptune. So this could be a Pisces or a very dreamy, romantic person. And then we have Earth energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, persistent, patient, and practical. So this could be another Earth sign. Okay. I feel like, um, wait, before I continue, let me go through all of them. So we have Leo here, Scorpio, Cancer. I might be repeating, but just bear with me. Gemini, Virgo, Taurus. I think you have all the signs. Okay, Virgo is strong. Taurus is strong. Pisces is here. Yeah, you have all the signs. You have all the air signs, all the earth signs, all the fire signs, all the water signs. So they're all here. So it doesn't even matter. But let's get into it. So the, the energy of your reading starts off with Venus energy, which you know is Taurus and Libra energy, okay? Number 21, love, sex, pleasure, and sensuality is showing up. So whoever this person is, there's a lot of love between you two. And this represents unconditional love. This represents that love that's on a different plane than just the physical plane. Someone's name could be Pamela, Angela, Tamika, Tammy. I'm sorry, y'all. Y'all know I get the channeling name sometimes, so don't mind me when I go off. Somebody's name could be Rocky, and someone's last name could be either Moody or Mooney. But let's get back to these cards. So when I ask what's going on here, we get Venus. And so I want to read Venus to you to make sense of what's going on with your person. I understand this will be a pretty in-depth reading, so, um, you know, just bear with me because it's a lot to, to go through. So this is all about being in receptive mode. And, you know, Taurus, what I want to tell you, with Venus being our ruling planet, I feel like for a lot of you, I'm seeing you be a big giver. I'm seeing you be a, a, a person who has gotten way less than you have given in relationships, especially your most recent, recent relationship, the one that you're inquiring about right now. You were the one giving. So this is about being in receptive mode. Let's get into it. It says soft, soften, charm, open the heart. Investigate how you can make the situation more beautiful, more fair, and lovely. Remember this Venusian truth. People are fascinated by those who find them fascinating. Use diplomacy and seduction and let others come to you. Engage creativity, generosity, and affection. Venus calls you to your heart, to romance, sings to you as a creative muse, and asks you what you value, what you want enough to get yourself in trouble. Come to know your heart. Know what you're passionate about and when you stir other people's passions. When your heart hurts, you can express the higher notes of Venus through acts of compassion, affection, or creativity. All become medicine for your sore heart. Pull out the art supplies and paint how you feel. Rescue a puppy. Help a person who needs loving kindness even more than you do. Your challenge is emotions run strong and passions are intense. Be wary of crimes of passion, love addiction, or looking for love in material things. If you're fascinated by the superficial aspects of Venus, you can get caught up in appearances of becoming blind in love. Look deeper. The gift of this card is Venus encourages a loving heart. To heal your own heart and become a Venusian beacon to the world around you, develop what the Buddhists refer to as Maitri, loving kindness benevolence, friendliness, and active interest in others' well-being. The numbers 58 and 59 are here, so they could very well be significant. So again, I see a lot of you being givers. A lot of the cards on the table show me that you're a giver. You give just kind of like almost to a fault, Taurus, almost to a fault. But let's, let's get into it. Your tarot card that I pulled for you is the Eight of Pentacles, which is Virgo energy. And I am going to read from the book. I'm only using the book today just because I want to really dig into 
why you're pulling these cards. Obviously, I know what the Eight of Pentacles is. Some of y'all probably know what the Eight of Pentacles is. I will just say before I read the book, um, Eight of Pentacles is a hardworking energy. Now, this could be the energy of cultivating a relationship or this could be somebody really heavily fixated on their financial stability right now. Okay, so we'll have to see why you pulled this in this love reading, all right? I'm only pulling one tarot card to start the reading and then we'll pull some oracles and then uh, clarify with more tarot. But I want you to understand this person is showing up as someone who might be a little bit preoccupied with their own life right now. So let's see what's going on. The numbers 96 or 97 could be significant. We have engagement, dedication, practice, and process. Okay, so the light aspect of this card. The Eight of Pentacles signals dig dignif dignifence. <laughs> The Eight of Pentacles signals diligence and commitment to your craft. You've decided what is important enough to dedicate yourself to fully. Now you are deeply absorbed in meticulous effort towards the mastery of your technique. If you put in the work, you will see rewards. Let your process be your sanctuary. Every, bro every brush stroke along the way is for you to feel and explore. Someone could definitely be, be a painter here. Um, every brush stroke along the way is for you to feel and explore. A work of art to experience in itself. Each new stroke of paint gets more refined as you echo the movement over and over again. Repetition is your opportunity to encounter yourself anew. Although your task remains steady, you can change by engaging with it. Repetition serves as your channel for observation of the process. Even if it takes many moons, keep going and be patient while you work on yourself. Over time, your learnings will build up to skills and eventually to proficiency. This process might even alter your entire understanding of your place in the universe. Now, the shadow aspect of this card is the inverted Eight of Pentacles reminds you not to fixate on chasing perfection. It likely doesn't exist unless it means that everything is always flawlessly imperfect or perfection could be ever present and constantly evolving. Either way, it is elusive. And crafting the artwork of your life, leave room for the unexpected and for the miracles of mistakes. You may just discover something magical there. Often, a sculpture's flaws are what render it magnificent. Stay diligent, but loosen your grip. If a task feels overwhelming or difficult to progress with, apply yourself step by step. Focus on your long-term vision and fully commit to its completion. Its stages will naturally reveal themselves to you as you proceed. Everything unfolds in its due time. And your tip based on this card is to start a practice. It can be anything. Repeat a task for short periods of time each day and watch yourself improve. Again, number 96 or 97 could be significant. Or the number 8. Some of you could be born on the 8th. Okay. So, I'm getting a couple of messages from that. Source. I feel like um, there's someone here who has this notion. This could be you. This could be them. This could be both of you. There is a desire to work on a relationship, but it's almost like if it's not perfect, it's not right. Because the Eight of Pentacles is definitely perfectionism. It's somebody that works really, really hard, prides themselves. Y'all know Virgos are anal retentive. You know, Virgos are very attentive to the details. And it's like if something, this one little thing is out of place, throw the whole thing away, right? And so that could be the way that you approach relationships or the person you're connected to. I feel like it might be more them than you. Let's see what else I want to get into. So let's look at some characteristics of this person so you can know if you're listening to the right reading. And if not, go check another placement. So this person is a night owl, showing up as a night owl. They could even work at night for some of you. You may know this. This person is showing up as spiritual or religious. And you may know this about them. They're showing up as the protagonist, the knight, I'm sorry, the king of cups, somebody that's 40 years of age and older, an extroverted, intuitive, feeling, and judging person, an ENFJ. All right, so this person is diplomatic, charismatic, an inspiring leader, a man or woman of their word. They can mesmerize listeners. They value you. They are your rock. They're emotionally stable and mature. So this will be someone who gives very sound advice, someone you can talk to about anything, someone you trust. And if they tell you, I wouldn't do that if I were you, you probably wouldn't do it, okay? Somebody that you feel like you can cry on their shoulder. This is the kind of person that's showing up here. They're showing up as a distinguished gentleman or woman, okay? Someone who is financially stable, generous, um, someone with the Midas touch, somebody that's like a high value man or woman, somebody of statue of stature someone of high status somebody who has a reputation for being somebody okay they could be an entrepreneur this person is also showing up as verbose meaning they are very wordy 
they uh, love to impress people with their vast vocabulary. So they can speak to people in a very intelligent way, sometimes over your head. Maybe they know a lot of big words. That may be something that you have recognized about. This person doesn't have to be the case. But let's get into the couple that you pulled. You pulled Azalea Banks and Dave Chappelle. <laughs> now, I don't know if y'all know they had a little fling. And Dave is a married man. So don't take this personally if this is not your story. This is just for shits and giggles okay just to bring out a little of my personality because i don't show it on here so anyway so this is a salacious relationship pure comedy salaciousness at its finest and probably some dope ass conversation but close your legs to married men understand i am seeing a couple of husbands here so for some of you if this ain't your husband they might be married to somebody else that may be something you know maybe something you don't know could even be your husband for some of you okay so the song that you channel is Tender Kisses by Tracy Spencer, who is a cancer. So it could be a cancer person. It could also just be cancer in your chart. So this is about ups and downs, unpredictability, a missed opportunity, and misunderstandings between you and this person. Interesting. When I ask the challenge that's going on with the Eight of Pentacles, we get the number 21, the third time on the table, and it says a desire for knowledge. Your person really feels like a hard worker. They could be training right now. They could be studying. They could be starting their own business. This person feels very money focused. They are showing up as practical. Remember, we did pull Earth energy. So it feels like this person's money comes before everything else, though there is love between you two. The message to you is I am totally in love with you in love now check this out their next message to you is i do like you and a, and a lot of other people too they have options and then we have situationship here i don't think we need to label things or define our relationship so this is somebody that just kind of wants the milk without buying the cow okay this is somebody who does love you does like you but they like other people too <laughs> i'm noticing that they said that they are totally in love with you but they like other people too so maybe they're not as serious about other people as they are with you but there's something very unconventional about this person which is strange because they're showing up as the king of cups and the king of pentacles which are both um very much people who like to be with one person okay they're very faithful dependable men or women right but let's see why this energy is showing up understand this could be past present future energy so let's get into it when it comes to them being in love with you we get the 12 I probably said the 12 of pentacles. Y'all need to go to bed. We have the um, hangman and we have the six of pentacles. Pros a perspective and generosity. Okay, so this is somebody that I feel like breadcrumbs you before. Again, you were very generous to this person. Now, I feel like they are do doing a lot of um, thinking about that. There's some contemplation about them giving you as equally as you've given to them. They realize that they have breadcrumbs you. They know it. It was one-sided. And they're saying that they're totally in love with you, but this may be just dawning on them. Things are in limbo between you two. And I do feel like this person is thinking about you a lot, especially if they work at night. It's something about them, <coughs> excuse me, thinking about you at night. Their perspective is changing on you. I think they're starting to feel really bad about the fact that they have breadcrumbs you, that they've taken more than they've given. And now they want to balance the scales here. They want to be more generous towards you. They want to give you the same way you give to them. When it comes to these other options that they have, we have the knight of wands and we have the knight of cups which would explain okay they're showing up as knights and they're showing up as the knight of instigation and introspection <laughs> i feel like this person's feelings are growing for you they're ready to follow their heart to you but there were other options they were keeping their options open in the knight of wands that's the play of the tarot somebody with a high sex drive somebody who likes the thrill of the chase they like the adrenaline rush of meeting new people and so does the knight of cups the knight of cups is fickle as well can be kind of hot and cold can be moody can be uh, somebody who's a little bit wishy-washy okay i always say if i'm going to pull a knight for myself i would want the knight of pentacles although he is slow moving he is dedicated he is loyal and he does want a long-term relationship the other knights to me just are a little bit too fickle, but you did pull a very passionate knight and you pulled a very emotional knight. So there's this push and pull, this hot and cold energy, even if you look at what they represent. You know, the interesting thing about the knight of wands is he's all fire. The knights are fire and they're given element and the wands are fire. So this is double fire. This is somebody extremely passionate. It's like when their loins get on fire for something or someone, they go after it. They don't think, they just move. They're like, I want it. But the Knight of Cups, what helps the Knight of Cups is he got he has water in him. Okay, and so understand him or her. I'm just saying him because it's a man on the card. Okay, so there, there's this, I would consider it like a warm water. You know, being in the in the bathtub and something like really warm water. It feels good, right? 
or you think about somebody who's a balance of fire and 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 uh, water, you get steam energy, right? So this is like a st a person who has these steamy, passionate feelings for you, but they have them for other people as well. And maybe this is why now they're trying to grow up and become a king. We want kings. We want emperor. We really want the emperor. But you know, a king is is good as well. Not knights, not pages. And all you're pulling is knights and pages when, when it comes to these cards. Situationship is showing up. I don't think we need to label things or define our relationship is showing up as the page of cups and the tower. Yeah. So I feel like for some of you, you realize this about this person. If you were naive at some point, if you were green at some point, if you were gullible and a pushover at some point, you're not anymore. For some of you, you had a wake up call and you realized this person was never going to give you what you wanted or needed. I also feel like this person suppresses their feelings for you with the tower being here. They ended up catching feelings for you. They ended up falling in love with you, becoming infatuated with you. And you have this person's head in the cloud. There could be a small message coming from this person. Oh, for some of you, that's the problem. It would just be that they pop up. They send you these little, I don't know, flirty text messages or pop up for sex or whatever. And then they disappear, you know, because there's definitely in and out energy here with the Knight of Wands and the Knight of Cups. I don't like them coming out together at all. Okay, so I understand that this person could be very funny with Dave Chappelle energy coming out. I also feel like you two had some great conversations because Azalea Banks is a Gemini and Dave Chappelle is a Virgo. And they are both ruled by um, Mercury. Both very much cerebral people. And Dave, again, is a Virgo. And you started with the Eight of Pentacles. Y'all know that is a sign that's considered like one of the best signs for us to date. So it could be a Virgo person for some of you. That doesn't matter. That's not really the biggest part of the story here. I just feel like this person does have feelings for you. I feel like they do love you, are in love with you, or they're starting to realize that they are. I don't think they like that they are realizing it, though, <laughs> because this person feels like the kind of person that rather focus on money and like hookups. But there's something about Taurus that just ain't letting them off the hook quite that easily. So let's get into these messages from Spirit. Your first card is, I am worthy of giving and receiving love. And that's interesting because you have the Six of Pentacles. And even your Oracle cards kind of pulled on the energy of you being an overgiver. I feel like what Spirit is saying here, Taurus, is you already given enough to this person. You don't have nothing else to prove. Let them prove themselves to you. Be in receptive mode as the Empress, Venus energy. Then we have, I'm manifesting a love that inspires laughter and joy. And you know, we do have Dave Chappelle. Your person could be very funny or some of you are drawn to the people with a strong sense of humor. It could be a Pisces person coming towards you. If it's, if it's not going to be this person, it could be a Pisces person. Okay, so we have here, what activities or moments make you feel genuinely happy? How can you incorporate these into your future relationships? Some of y'all could even meet someone at a comedy show or something like that. You need to go into places with high vibrational energy. I believe I told y'all this yesterday or one of these days, like the last two or three days, that you needed to be in very high vibrational energy to attract this person if it's someone new that you're trying to connect with. So we have children. Your connection with children is part of your life purpose. So Spirit wants you to focus on your connection with children. You could also be very connected to this person's children or your own, obviously. Okay, some of you work really well with children. You're showing up as Venus, which is the Empress, which is maternal energy, unconditional love. And the thing is, you know, some of you could even attract with all these pages and one, you know, this younger energy. You attract very immature people that almost you feel like you have the mother. We have, you've got the power. Use your abilities to resolve this situation. You can do it. This is the uh, magician. Some of you are on the Taurus Gemini cusp or have Gemini Virgo in your chart or you're dealing with a Gemini or Virgo. And see, this is the thing. I feel like whoever you're dealing with Taurus, they uh, they are hard to resist. And it doesn't even have so much to do with their body, even though I am saying that they are sexy with the Knight of Wands. Knight of Wands is sexy. It, even the Knight of Cups is someone very attractive. Almost has like um, the Knight of uh, Cups is known to have like feminine soft features. Okay. So this person could have very... Um, Mm. What is the word? I want to say androgynous features. I don't know if that's the right word I want to use, but they could have uh, the kind of face that would look good if they were a man or a woman. Because that's definitely what the Knight of Cups represents. Sometimes mistaken as a woman, okay, in, in the cards. But the Knight of Wands is definitely an athlete, someone whose body is in shape, someone who's good in bed, someone who's sexy, charismatic, charming. Both of them are charming. They're flirtatious. They're all of that, right? But some of you, this is what you attract. You may fall for the good looks. You may fall for the... You know, the handsome, sexy, or beautiful, sexy, voluptuous, like whatever it is that you like. These people show up this way, but the depth ain't there. You know what I mean? And that depth is what's needed. 
So Spirit is saying here, what activities or moments make you feel genuinely happy? How can you incorporate these into your future relationships? So I do feel like Spirit is saying you're moving on. You're manifesting someone new. Okay, and you have the ability to manifest what you want, but you're going to have to almost get, sit down. This is an, um, an activity that I would advise for you all. Sit down and write out where you've gone wrong in relationships. And all of the things that you did wrong, flip them into the positive and write those down as your new person. Even if it's that you're manifesting this person back in new energy, write them down as everything that you want, not what you don't want, not what you have already experienced, but what you are going to experience. I don't even want to say you want to experience. No, that you're going to experience because if they don't come this way, you don't want them. Okay. So it's like this person has this, when I say that you have this person figured out and everybody else is fooled by them, but you're not, it's because of the fact that you know that they love you. You know that they care for you. You see something in this person, but the thing is relationships are not meant to be like DIY projects. Mm -mm. Nope. You're not supposed to do it yourself. You're not supposed to take on people as projects. So this is all about you understanding that, yeah, I may know that this person loves me deeper than what they say with the situationship energy going into the tower and the and the page of cups, meaning, okay, I know that there's some feelings. I know that I got their nose open. You do. Of course, a tourist going to have somebody's nose open. But the thing is, what good is that if all I'm going to do is end up hurt and be somebody's mama? Because Spirit might be telling you, here, you got your own children to worry about. You don't need, a, a you know, another one. Let's get messages from this person. First message from them is, I need a lot of space from my partner, and that is my toxic trait. Mm -mm, this is what they want you to know. They pull away. They want you to know they feel inadequate compared to you. And I absolutely see that because you're showing up as Venus, the Empress, Venusian energy. They're showing up as pages and, and knights. Last one is they feel you've pulled a them on them. You beat them at their own game again. So you see through this person, you're not going to chase behind them. You're in receptive mode. And I want to, I want to congratulate you because I feel like this has been a long time coming. You have been fighting for this. This has been rough. For some of you, this, this energy of the, the uh, King of Pentacles is actually you. You're the one that's a high value man or woman. You're the one with your stuff together. You're the one with the Midas touch building an empire or already has. This person is still a work in progress. The Eight of Pentacles is a work in progress. There's still more work to be done. But the good thing about the Ace is that there is something cultivating. There is still some effort being put in. I don't think this person is, is done with you at all. They do have a desire to learn more about you because the desire for knowledge is going into the Eight of Pentacles, which is a desire to learn. But it's like this person, they got to pay attention to your needs. It can't just be all about them. And that is where we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. 2222 two, two, two was just on the timer, y'all. Definitely giving soulmate energy. If it ain't going to be them, it'll be somebody else and it'll be their loss. All right, y'all. Like, subscribe, hit the notification bell. See y'all next time. Peace.